Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys six tips I wish I was told before I started peritoneal dialysis. I did PD dialysis for about a year and I want to say nine months, maybe even more. Overall, I did dialysis for two and a half years. I did hemo, then I switched to PD. So I'm going to be talking about those six tips. But before we continue on, I want to quickly introduce myself for anybody that might be new here. My name is Cindy Flores, and on my channel, I share my kidney transplant journey as well as testimonies, life, travel vlogs, a ton of stuff. So definitely consider subscribing. For you would be let your incision heal and I am telling you this because my doctor actually told me that a lot of doctors only let their patients incision heal for two weeks which is not good and usually leads to more complications leads to infection easier because your body should take about a month for that incision to heal remember the healing process doesn't happen overnight it takes time so I feel like a month is the proper amount my doctor allowed mine to heal for a month and I never had any complications I always had a good experience on peritoneal except this one time I got peritonitis which wasn't even um, caused because of me not being sterile enough or not being clean enough it was because I had a ruptured cyst which caused the bacteria to go up there and so forth which a different story anyways but this is important to let your catheter heal completely. You want to make sure it's fully healed before you start using it because you could actually move it around and actually cause it to like be more irritated. Tip number two, try not to miss a cycle. So if you are doing manual PD or automatic PD, manuals we are doing it about four or three times a day throughout the day, which is usually about 30 minutes exchange. And then automatic is basically when you're doing it all night while you're sleeping. When you are doing peritoneal dialysis, as you guys know, you're inserting the fluid in your peritoneum cavity. And when you miss an exchange, if you don't do like your dialysis that night or don't do it during the day, you will absorb that fluid. And you don't want that to happen because your body's already probably swelling from fluid from the, the kidney disease, right? So it's super important that you make sure you always do your cycles because you don't want that fluid to absorb more like and cause more unnecessary swelling that you don't need. Tip number three, do not try doing any type of heavy exercises while you're on peritoneal dialysis. And I'm speaking this from my experience. I later found out on my PD dialysis journey that I could not work out. Even if I wasn't carrying fluid in my stomach, my just the linings in my stomach were just so torn down and so, I guess, worn from all the fluid that I actually, the one time I decided to go to the gym and I wasn't even doing heavy lifting, I actually got an inguinal hernia, which I'll link it right here, the video about me talking about that hernia and I think I have images in there. Um, but yes, I feel like if you want to get some workout or, you know, get fit or try to lose some weight maybe or try to get healthy and up and moving, I feel like the best type of workout you can get is your daily activity workout or even going on walks. Daily activity, just like going up the stairs or walking from one end to the house to another end, doing some garden work, that is your daily activity or walking. And I wish I would have known this before because I would have never tried to you know, work out if I knew something like that was gonna happen to me. But then again, it makes sense. Like, you know the whole concept of when you go into the water and then you come out and your skin is like wrinkly and like kind of like a little shriveled up raisin? That's pretty much what's happening on the inside of your stomach in the peritoneum cavity. That lining is not used to that solution being there and it's gonna get worn out and thinned out. And inguinal hernias, if you guys know a little bit about them or don't, they are super rare, especially in females. So I was actually really shocked that I had one, but I knew it was because of PD dialysis and me trying to do some workouts. Tip number four, 
Watch what you eat, guys, and this is super important. I know if you're going from hemodialysis and then switching to peritoneal dialysis, they say not to worry about your diet and that you're on a less strict diet. However, in my opinion, I feel like it's super important that you watch what you eat just because you're doing dialysis every single day rather than three times a day does not mean that you can go and eat a whole bunch of potassium or phosphorus or protein like truly limit yourself it's important because you want that little remaining function that you do have in your kidneys to last as long as possible so don't think oh you can eat whatever you want because the doctor said oh i'm not you don't have to be on such a strict diet i still recommend that you maintain that strict diet try looking out for your kidneys take kidney boosters if you can like like berries aloe vera so forth like really try to maintain the health of the remaining kidney tip number five be sterile and I know it's not as easy as it sounds if you guys have done like any type of dialysis or anything that needs to be extra sterile. It can be difficult because one little like one little problem can lead into a whole mess if that makes sense. But it's super important to wear your mask, wash your hands, be as clean as possible. Also clean the dialysis space and the dialysis machine or manual stuff good. Like do your proper care, the proper care for your equipment, the proper care for yourself. Like just really try to be as sterile as possible. Also don't ever forget to wear a mask. This is so, so important. Like you don't want to risk yourself any type of breathing contact to go with any of your tubes because you know that can cause infection. So try to be as sterile as possible so you can prevent any type of peritonitis. Tip number six, it would be tie your tubes to your stomach good. And guys, this is something so simple, but it can turn into a whole complicated mess if you're not doing it right or it could actually be very irritating. I would just use medical tape and I would just like tape it on throughout my stomach, kind of just slap it on there. But over time, like, it would get so annoying because I would lift up my shirt and I would have tape everywhere. Some people could actually purchase like a belt and they just keep it strapped on. I just never wanted to purchase the belt so I kind of just taped it. But make sure you're taping it good because you don't want it to accidentally get pulled or tugged on anything and cause bleeding around your incision and actually cause the like damage. So make sure you're taping it correctly to your stomach. Buy in the belt if you feel more comfortable. So tape your tubes properly to your stomach because you don't want any types of accidents. So those are my six tips. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please don't forget to leave them down below or also any video requests, leave them down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in my next video.